During Prohibition America, men and women weren't necessarily forced to suffer the foolishness of their government. Thanks to a certain brave American who involved themselves in the dangerous career of bootlegging. Due to the efforts of these social heroes, good times were more evident than ever. Not that the benefit was entirely granted to the patrons. One such maverick was Joe Ball of South Texas. Joe was bold. Joe was strong. Joe was a great shot. And he had a wicked sense of humor. According to Joe's nephew, Bucky. My uncle could shoot a bird off the telephone line with a pistol from the bumper of a model A4. And according to his handyman, Wheeler, Joe could make him dance a jitterbug whenever he got drunk on whiskey. Shake a leg! Dance like you mean it or ain't never dancing again! C come on, Joe! Knock it off! This ain't the right way to treat your old pal, Wheeler! Ha <laughs> ha! I'm gonna make you a big star. I swear to God, Joe, one of these days you're gonna blow all these feet right off. I know it. You lousy son of a bitch. Every time you insult my shooting, I'm gonna take one step closer. Now dance. When the prohibition was over, Joe used his expertise of the liquor business to open his own saloon. He named it the Sociable Inn. Business was good, but a big man like Joe needed to stand taller than all the rest. Some might call it a gimmick, some might call it horror, but none could deny that it was inspired. Behind his bar, Joe dug a pool to contain five live gators. Now, Joe had no experience working with a circus or any sort of animal entertainment enterprise, but Joe had a good gut, and his gut feel intended to pay off. Everybody loved Joe's gators. Saturday nights were especially electrified with the drunken adrenaline. Joe would see to it that his customers kept on the edge by tossing a live cat or a raccoon into the pit. And if the cat got the crowd roaring, Joe would top himself by tossing in a puppy dog. There's more to come, my pets. Any poor, wretched animal would be regarded toys for the drunken orgy. There were beasts in the back, but beauties inside. Joe only hired the prettiest of waitresses at his saloon. The sociable inn was proven to be a biting success for Joe. Some folk regretted that most of the pretty ladies didn't stick around long. Joe explained that most of the girls he hired were just passing through for a quick buck. In 1934, took a liking to a woman from Seguin known to most as Big Minnie. Minnie was not well liked by Joe's friends, who considered her to be both officious and loathsome. All right, Goldsmith. Let's see what you got. Ha <laughs> I ain't got nothing but a pair of quattros. Oh, Goldsmith. You son of a bitch, not again. It ain't my fault you fellas are facially illiterate. <laughs> now listen here. If you degenerates are gonna sit here gambling the hours away, you need to maintain your two drinks an hour at least. If you can't keep up the minimum requirements, I'm sure your wives will play tend to your loafing needs. You can let her pick up your coasters from the floor. Coasters? What the hell is she talking about? And soon she began helping him around the saloon. Until around came along Dolores Buddy Goodwin. Buddy, so sticky with the sweetness of honey. Come on, honey. Come over here with that sunshine and blind these poor peppers. Stop it, Joe. You're making me blush. Just call him as a season girl. Like a rooster in the morning. Cack a doo doo, girl. and looks in front of Big Minnie. Buddy's fragile beauty was left as shattered as Joe's bottle of whiskey. Still, she remained enamored with her man. But her man's love life would only continue to tangle into complication. Again, he fell in love, and a 
again the women grew younger and more beautiful. Hazel Brown beamed confidence, and she was rivaled only by the gators for the customer's attention. Oh, and hell scratch, here comes Hazel. She's gonna be mighty mad if you beat up in your tap again. <laughs> what you gonna do, Hazel? Come knocking on my door? <laughs> That's right, Scratch. And I'm gonna drag you back to the damn crazy gator pit back there and let him chew the ass off your backside. And how do you like the sound of that? Oh, 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 oh. Joe was a fool in love. And only a fool would find himself standing in one saloon with three women. Joe, I keep finding wrong bills mixed in with each other. Jeez, keep it organized. Joe, did you need any help back Joe, there? Joe, we got any more of that fancy Johnny Walker whiskey in the back? But fate became actively involved to solve Joe's dilemmas. Big Minnie suddenly disappeared. She'd run out of town after she gave birth to a black baby. A few months later, Joe finally took poor Buddy's hand in marriage. Once a drunken Joe let slip to his bride a strange proclamation of his love. That big Minnie didn't really run off a black baby. She had it easier. I took her to the beach and shot her in the head. I did it for you, girl. She, she was standing in your way, weren't she? Joe, that ain't a right approach to humor. That's uh, funny in its own way. A year later, Buddy was further mutilated in a car crash. She survived the crash, but her left arm was amputated as a result. Of course, popular rumor around town was the tragedy was really a gator-related accident, or non-accident. That very same year, Buddy disappeared from the crowd, and not long after, beautiful Hazel did as well. It wasn't that women were coming and going from Joe's love life was strange, but that the three disappeared in such close proximity of time. As Joe drowned his heartbreak in liquor, he neglected the growing odor of rotten meat, unbearable to a neighbor of his. Hey, hey, uh, Joe, can't, can't you do something about that damn smell? It's nauseating. Must be the gator food. Gators gotta eat, don't they? I swear, my wife's threatening to leave town and I don't blame her none. Why don't you keep your nosy face out of my business before I add it to the slop? Hey, hey, come on now. Based on suspicious reports from Big Minnie's family, the sheriff's office began to look into the goings on of Joe's establishment. I'm Deputy Gray. And this is Deputy Clevenhagen, and we'd like to ask you a few questions. If that's all right with you, Ball. Listen, people come and people go from this place all the time. Some of them are just passing through, is all. So, what's the deal with the alligators, Ball? They're professional entertainers. Everybody loves my gators. I'm sure they do, Ball. They are pretty funny in there. Well, I think we've seen enough. Yep. We'll follow up on this black baby situation you turned us on to, Ball. Thanks. Without no evidence of foul play, investigations against Joe were dismissed. Until yet another missing girl story emerged. One of young Julia Turner, who'd been last known to work part-time for Joe. Right, right. That girl had problems. Personal problems have moved on. Uh-huh. Well, thanks again, Ball. Hey, Ball. We went back and, uh, checked out the place Turner was sharing with a roommate. Yeah, it's peculiar. She didn't pack any of her belongings before she left. That's right, because I remember. I forgot. 
to tell you that she didn't want to go back to her roommate because she was having problems with that roommate. And I lent her $500 so she wouldn't have to go back. Hmm. That's mighty generous of you, Joe. Real nice. Real stand up. In the coming months, few more of Joe's employees were reported missing. But no such evidence could be lent to Joe. And even with the police's relentless questioning, Joe maintained his innocence. That's right. She skipped town. Oh, okay. That's both of them, right, Joe? That's what I said. Finally, old enemies Joe created came out from hiding to give testimonials. I saw that psychopath cut meat off a human body and feed them into that damn alligator pit. That man is a monster. Senior Ball stores a very terrible smelling barrel in the barn of his sister's place. It smelled like something dead inside. Yeah, he rolled that foul-smelling shit out of here a while back, thank God. Treating my barn like a goddamn outhouse, that son of a bitch. All right, Joe, this is getting a little too strange now. Yeah, you're coming with us, Joe. Down to San Antonio. Can I at least close the saloon before we go? Yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah, go on ahead, Joe. Man's gotta take care of his work. I'm gonna have a beer. You guys want one? Nah, that's okay, Joe. It's a little early for us, but thanks for asking, Joe. You make that look mighty tasty, Joe. Sure do. Makes me a little jealous. No! Don't! Investigators are soon searching every corner of Joe's saloon. Rotted meat was scattered all around the gator pond, and the investigators discovered a blood and hair matted axe. Though Joe never made it to San Antonio, his handyman Wheeler made a very intriguing guest. After some time under the heat of Gray and Clevenhagen's famous questioning, Wheeler finally broke out some details. All right, Wheeler, spill the beans. Yeah, we're real good listeners, Wheeler. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. I had nothing to do with no murder. I'm just a hard help, that's all. Spill it. Wheeler's story was interesting for the case of beautiful Hazel, who vanished without a trace. In fact, she'd fallen in love with another man and made plans to leave Joe and his gators for a new life. You lousy whore! Nobody leaves me! Nobody! Not unless they get themselves a black baby, huh, Joe? That's a load of shit. Do you really think anyone buys that? I never cared for Minnie, but I'll tell you one thing. She deserved better than you. <laughs> hey! Hey! What the hell are you up to? Stop! Ah! Now we want to see some proof of this story of yours, Wheeler. Wheeler took the officers to an isolated location three miles from town. He scanned the area for loose soil and began to dig. After a few minutes of digging, blood began to ooze from the ground. Jesus, the smell is fucking blah. Jesus, where's the guy that head, Wheeler? Yeah, over there by the campfire. Oh, fuck, Wheeler! Blah! According to Wheeler, after a night of debauchery, Joe enlisted him to help pick up a barrel from Joe's sister's barn. Inside the barrel was the deceased Hazel. Wheeler had to help dismember her body, as Joe was too drunk to do it himself. Hold her still, damn it! 
a few breaks in between, the job was finally completed, and Hazel's head was tossed into the fire. Jesus, Wheeler. Must have been a real swell campfire, huh? What about this other girlfriend of his went missing? Big mini? Well, things are getting mighty complex around that saloon. Joe took Minnie down inside, because he was in relations with Buddy. Big Minnie had gotten pregnant, and now it's going to mess things up for Joe. He found a nice place where nobody was around, and he drank a ton of whiskey. He waited until she was right distracted. You had your fun, Joe. You know I'm not stupid like those other girls. But now that we're going to be a family, it's time to grow up and settle down with who's really going to take care of us. You agree, of course. Wheeler's story checked out. After a heavy search around the location, partially decomposed remains of Big Minnie's body was discovered in the sand. Yet one of the mysterious disappearances proved not fatal. Dolores Buddy Goodwin. She was alive and well, living in San Diego, California. Speculation led the public to assume that many missing tavern workers and patrons became the victims of Joe's horror. But sweet Buddy stood by her old love. Joe never put bodies in the alligator tank. Joe wouldn't do a thing like that. He wasn't no horrible monster. He was a sweet, kind, good man. He never hurt anybody unless he was driven to it. There were only those two murders. Though many do not believe it, it is entirely possible that the only ones who met their demise at Joe's hands were the two rival lovers. None of the meat scattered about the gator pond proved to be of human flesh. Though investigators speculated, he simply cleaned the remaining flesh. Wheeler pled guilty to assisting in the disposal of the two corpses. And for these acts, he spent two years in jail. Upon his release, he opened a bar of his own. Murderer! You ought to burn in hell, you evil Sinistron! Needless to say, Wheeler's establishment failed miserably, and he was forced to leave the area, never to be heard from again. As for Joe's gators, they were sized by the state of Texas and donated to the San Antonio Zoo, living the remainder of their lives as tourist attractions. Joe Ball would live on through the legends as the bluebird of South Texas, it was widely believed that Joe killed at least 20 people, though none of them could be proven. Evidence can have a funny way of being chewed up and swallowed. They're professional entertainers. Everybody loves my gators.